today we have actually driven further east stupidly closer to Hurricane Dorian which uh, by the way well you know I mentioned Hurricane Dorian because um, yesterday they announced that it kind of changed its trajectory or its trajected path where they think it's going to go and instead of it just uh, smacking Florida and swallowing it whole it's actually going to turn and follow the coastline and go up towards South Carolina and North Carolina if you're in the path of the storm please 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 take the precautions necessary don't treat it like it's nothing stay safe uh, you know just just stay safe today I am in the great state of Georgia and I've got a pretty interesting story I want to tell today in 1973 three escaped prisoners from Maryland committed one of the state of Georgia's bloodiest massacres ever today I am in Donaldsonville Georgia and I'm gonna be telling the stories of the all-day family murders it's a horror film come to life it really is I had no intentions on really talking much about the town of Donaldson until I got here. This town is super cool. It's just, just the old Americana that has falling into despair because of the big cities. And uh, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time here because I wanna get into the all day murder story, but there's a, a few things that I wanna point out here in Donaldsonville, Georgia. For one, this is their downtown, their historic district. I love these old towns like this. I just absolutely love them. So look, this is a uh, this is a police station. I mean, really. Look at that. Too cool. There. CV, I guess there's no one on duty today. There's the radio. Wow. Here's their, this is the, the Donaldsonville police vehicle. That's it, there's their, there's their police car. <laughs> I've never seen another town like it with a police station like that. Never. May the 14th of 1973 started out like any other day for the residents here in Donaldsonville Georgia Donaldsonville it's a fairly small town as you can see from the downtown area it's about 15 miles from the Alabama state line and in 1973 it had a population of around 2700 people little did people know on May the 14th anyway. events were set in motion that would change this town forever and the lives of everyone who lived here before the intro I said that this story was a horror movie come to life and it really is once you hear this story you will surely be able to imagine it as a horror flick except it really did happen. Just days prior to the 14th, 19 year old Carl Isaacs teamed up with a man named Wayne Coleman and another man named George Dundee. All three were imprisoned at Poplar Hill Correctional Institute in Quantico, Maryland. All right, they were all in jail. All three of them drew up plans and devised an escape plan. They ultimately climbed through a bathroom window 
they concealed themselves in woods that surrounded the prison made their way out to a major road where they stole a car and they began heading south as fast as they could once they escaped they stopped and picked up Carl Isaac's brother Billy Isaacs as well their plan they were gonna head south to Florida and then on to Mexico where the long arm of the law here in America couldn't get them at the time so they wouldn't have to be locked up again their plan was a pretty good one but it required them to have money that they didn't have I mean they were prisoners they didn't have any money that began a nine day string of robberies that stretched all the way down the East Coast they would drive for a long time uh, find a town that they wanted to stay in spend the night get up the next day knock off a store make some money fill up their tank with gas and quickly move on further south until they got low on gas again they started the process all over again they continued their their trek down the east coast knocking off stores until they made it right here to Donaldsonville Georgia on an in an interesting note heading out to the location where it happened they actually renamed the, the road that they lived on after the patriarch of the family, Ned Alday, who was the father. The Isaacs brothers were driving up the road this way when they spotted a trailer right off the road over here. It's no longer there, obviously. We're talking about back in the 70s, but they spotted a trailer right here. When they spotted the farm that was right here on this property, I don't know how well you can see it, they have uh, right where the trailer is they've kept the their field the new fields cut out now obviously uh, this obviously this property doesn't belong to the old days anymore the Isaacs driving down the road they spotted the trailer and the farm they were just about out of gas so they decided they were gonna pull in and look for some gas here on the all day family farm they did spot a large gas tank but it didn't have a nozzle on it the all days kept it off to deter from theft to the Isaacs though this was their next target they could fill up their car with gas they could continue heading south right on down into Florida the the farm land that they happened upon belonged to a multiple generation farmer named Ned Alday Ned and his family they had their family trailer where they lived positioned right here off to the back of it was the gas tank that the Isaac brothers saw while going down the road everything else out here was farmland as fate would have it though the Isaac brothers with Coleman and Dungey would pull onto the all-day property pull behind the trailer right up to the gas tank in an unfortunate stroke of luck the exact moment the Isaac brothers were trying to steal gas from their tank Ned and his son Jerry come around the corner of their trailer to see the Isaac brothers there at the gas tanks Ned and Jerry were forced inside of their family home at gunpoint where Coleman and Dungy were already inside ransacking looking for drugs or money anything that was of value to them so Ned and Jerry were forced in at gunpoint taken to two different bedrooms and executed without a second thought well it was a very short time later that Jerry's brother Jimmy also come from in the field to the trailer Jimmy also would be led inside of the trailer at gunpoint forced to lay down on the couch where he was executed and then uh, sometime later Jerry's wife Mary came in from the fields but instead of being led in and executed she was taken hostage and restrained but while two of the men were restraining Mary all day a pickup truck pulled in in the driveway it was two of Jerry's cousins Chester and Audrey after shooting Chester and Audrey they turned their attention back to 25 year old Mary all day she was the only one that they had left alive to this point they took turns raping Mary all day on the 
kitchen table in their trailer here. Before they took her out of the trailer, carried her right down the road to this wood line, right over here. But they took her off into the woods. They took turns raping her again and immediately executed her as soon as they were finished with her. And then left her out there in the woods. None of them deserved any of it, but she had the absolute worst of all of it. Mary's body would not be found for several days after the rest of the Alde family's bodies were found because they had taken her out to the woods and killed her instead of leaving her in the trailer. It was several days later when a nearby neighbor stumbled onto the crime scene inside of the trailer before anyone knew what happened. Six members of the All Day family died that day. Ned, his son Jerry, his other son Jimmy, Jerry's wife Mary, Chester, and Audrey were all brutally murdered, senselessly murdered. There was no reason for it. For some gasoline? I mean, come on. The family who owns all this land now where this brutal crime took place has erected this stone here in the spot in memory of the All Day family, May 14th, 1973, right here. It all happened right here. To, I guess, wrap up their story, all four of the despicable people who committed this atrocity, they left the All Day farm in Mary's car. They drove over to Alabama where they actually ditched Mary's car and stole another car. For whatever reason, while they were in Alabama, they ditched their plan to go to Florida and then on to Mexico. And they, they turned around and started heading back up north for I don't know what reason. Uh, only a few days after, they brutally took the lives of the All Day family. All four of their murderers botched a robbery in West Virginia and they were arrested. The All Day family were all laid to rest right here. Chester and Aubrey. Here's Jerry, the son, and his wife, Mary. She unbelievably took the worst of it. Here's Jimmy and Ned. It's all six of the All Day family members who were murdered that day. Immediately after they were captured in West Virginia, Billy Isaacs rolled on the rest of them. He cooperated with police, told everything. He even agreed to testify against them for a 40-year sentence for armed robbery instead of life or the death penalty. And police really didn't even need him because I guess Carl was an idiot. Because while he was in prison, awaiting his trial, he spoke with a documentary filmmaker and he confessed everything to him. I, I, I don't know why. Uh, he told him about this escape from Maryland, all the robberies they did, even the brutal things that they did to Mary all day. He told that documentary person everything and it was all used in his trial against him. I don't think, you know, that the taking of my life is going to pay for what happened in Seminole County. I mean, you know, the people were killed, but uh, killing me isn't going to bring him back to life. Wayne Coleman and George Dungy were both sentenced to life in prison. George Dungy died, still incarcerated in 2006, and Wayne Coleman is still alive and still incarcerated right now to this day. Billy wound up serving 35 years for the armed robbery and was sent back to Maryland where he was paroled in 1993. He moved down to Florida where he, uh, he lived with his wife until 2009 when he passed away. And as for the ringleader, Carl Isaacs, Carl was sentenced to death. In 2003, 
Carl Isaacs was executed by the state of Georgia after a lengthy appeals nightmare that gave Carl the distinction of being the United States longest serving death row inmate. He sat on death row longer than anybody else. He was on death row for more than 30 years while he tried to appeal his execution. Nevertheless, 2003, his execution was upheld by the state of Georgia. Like I told you, this was a tragic story. One that big budget horror movies are made of. It was despicable. That is it for this story on the all day family murders. I want to thank you all for watching this episode and God bless to all the remaining relatives of the all day family and what they went through. Quite a few of them showed up to actually witness Carl Isaac's execution. So that was good. Thank you all so much. I will see you again tomorrow as we start getting ready for Hurricane Dorian to make landfall. All of you stay safe. Thank you all so much. I hope you have a great day.